Hello, 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 people. And today is January 9th. Welcome to the year 2021. Okay, now according to the Gregorian calendar, which has conveniently omitted hundreds of thousands of years of glorious history in order to validate certain civilizations that didn't even exist that far back. But that's a different subject. So here we are thinking we just went into the year 2021 and celebrating it. But thanks to the resident of the United States of America, that celebration has come to an abrupt, sad and tragic halt. Now, I know everyone's going to be getting their own take on this or what just happened in the nation's capital city. And you know, you all know I like to keep myself on the peripheral of any contentious matter so that I can get a wider perspective and a bird's eye view and a complete picture. Then I can better ascertain the truth and exact science of what has transpired. So we're talking federal crimes, federal offenses, the Capitol Hill insurrection, or the Donald J. Trump insurrection, but they're calling it the Capitol Hill insurrection. And for those of you crying, this is not America. This is not America. Sit down and shut up. This is exactly what America is. America has never not been this way. But now that it affects you directly instead of the other Americans, now you feel that same thing we've been feeling all this time, all these years, all these decades, all these centuries. Was it America for Breonna Taylor? Was it America for George Floyd, Tamir Rice, Emmett Till, Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, Marcus Garvey? Was it America for my mother and millions of other people of color? Yes, this is America. And now that you finally know what America is about, what are you prepared to do about it? What are you prepared to do about it? That's the question. Now, let's go back, go on back and see my previous post and see how I warned you all that something crazy was going to happen before the inauguration. Go back and see. I warned you guys. I'm telling you, my perspicacity is usually on spot. Level done change, y'all. That's, that's all I got to say. Level done change. That's the name of a Nigerian movie. It's a comedy. If you guys go on uh, YouTube, maybe you can find it. It's called Level Done Change. It's very funny. But in this instance, it's not funny at all. Excuse me. Today in Abuja, I'm in Abuja, Nigeria, and today's supposed to be about 38 degrees Celsius. It's very hot here. Anyway, Donald J. Trump has trumped himself. Pun intended. He has finally allowed his arrogance, ego, and superiority complex to get the best of him. This man is in serious, serious, serious trouble this time that he will not be able to wiggle his capricious, Humpty Dumpty McDonald's eaten ass out of. The guy is done. Five American citizens are dead due to his insubordinate, solipsistic behavior. And that blame rests solely on the shoulders of Donald J. Trump. Now, the thing that puzzles me about it is, why would they allow an anti-Joe Biden rally led by Trump in the capital city on the same day, at the same place, at the same time that Joe Biden's votes were supposed to be certified. Doesn't that sound like a recipe for disaster to you? I mean, common sense couldn't really be that uncommon. Why would they allow Donald Trump with his erratic behavior to call all of his fanatic people in the same area where Joe Biden's certification was taking place at the same time. That's what we need to question first. And once we get past that, then they need to get to the rest of the mayhem. These fanatic extremists brought all kinds of weapons to the rally. And sadly, because they were the complexion of the protection, the police didn't even check them. Did you see how nicely they guided them off the steps of the Senate building? They were trespassing. Black Lives Matter 
and George Floyd protesters were treated much more violently by law enforcement officers for walking in the middle of the streets and peaceful and lawful protests. So what does that tell us? And remember, Donald J. Trump called them terrorists for holding peaceful protests against police brutality and police killings. They call us terrorists. Go figure. And to be honest, I only half blame the crowd of rioters who answered Trump's rally call and stormed the Senate building. And I'll tell you why I say that. Because of their loyalty to their elected president, which should be expected, who played and deceived them. And not only did he deceive them, he, he threw the Vice President Pence under the bus, left him out to dry, and they haven't even spoken since that incident. How do you kick your hype man to the curb? The one that had your back from day one? No loyalty at all. And some fools still wanna follow him? At some point, he has turned against everyone he has employed, one by one. They all fall down. I don't know. They, and they don't get it after four years, and they're not, they're not getting it yet. You know, they trusted him and believed what he told them. You have to understand that some of them honestly believe what he says. As their trusted leader, no matter how outlandish it may sound, don't all you Christians believe your pastors? I didn't say that. Didn't hundreds of people believe Reverend Jim Jones and drank poison Kool-Aid at the Jonestown Massacre back in 1978? And this is why we have to always teach the history, because if we don't, history repeats itself. Okay? Remember what I told you guys in my other post. I warned you. All it takes is one charismatic leader and a pocket of followers to steer a multitude in the wrong direction. I was talking about that on my previous post, and now these things are coming to light. So, their rebellious actions against what they were told was an evil regime trying to overtake their government and destroy their country and their freedom goes back to the dishonest rhetoric their president put into their empty heads. So I feel sorry for his supporters who fell for his lies and really thought they were defending their country's democracy. If you're patriotic and you're trying to support your country, you tend to follow where your leader leads you. Is, is that a natural course of action? But in this case, they're just following a lunatic, very unhinged lunatic, and people are finding it out. Now, as I always say, not all Republicans are racist and not all Republicans agree with Donald Trump. Some are just supporting their hereditary political party the way their parents supported it, as their parents' parents supported it. The same reason why most of you follow the religion that you're in. Your parents led you into it. Few people discover religion on their own, based on their own individual choice and commitment. Just a few. But most of us, it's hereditary. Same thing with political parties. So we can't look at all Republicans and say that, oh, Republicans are this, Republicans are that. You know what? I was talking to Howard Hewitt the other day, and he broke it down. He said, there are Republicans and there are Trumpsters. But I like to call them Trumpeteers. So you either got Republicans, and there are a lot of Republicans. There's a lot of good Republican people out there. And then you have your Trumpeteers, and these are the people we're worried about. And this is what we're into, okay? But we also have to cipher out and hold accountable those who followed Trump because his demeanor and rhetoric was synonymous to their insinuous beliefs. They were just hoping Trump would open up a gap in the fabric of our society wide enough for them to slide in and then carry out their own diabolical agendas. It now appears that some of these extremist groups have been waiting on this opportunity for a very, very, very long time. Now, I like to consider myself an unbiased person, especially when it comes to disseminating knowledge and information. So I'm going to give resident Trump the benefit of a doubt. Now, now, wait a minute, before, don't throw things at me yet, don't go off yet, J just, just follow me for a minute. I'm gonna give resident Trump, I told you guys, he's not the president, he's a resident, and that a re resident's about to get evicted. Anyway, I'm gonna give resident Trump the benefit of the doubt. 
I'll go as far to say, he may not have intended for his more fanatic followers to storm into a Senate building. He may have just wanted them to show support in numbers to his rally and just intimidate the Democrats as a last line of disruption to a process that he knew was inevitable. Just ask about 140 or so Republicans knew they couldn't stop uh, Biden's cert certification, but they went in anyway to object it as a ploy to delay the process just to piss off the Democrats. I personally think it was for revenge for Trump's previous embarrassing impeachment. We all know Trump's, he has a propensity for tit for tat behavior. We all know that he's, he's exhibited that numerous times. But here's the problem, here's the problem. Now, if you go out and hire a real mob hitman just to shake up a neighborhood bully, there's no way to guarantee that hitman won't go overboard handling it the way he's accustomed to. You could wind up with a dead body on your hands and that's just what happened. Five dead bodies because Trump called in the country's top extremist groups to rally for him in the nation's capital and they got out of control. Now, now, on the other hand, on the other hand, okay, stick with me. On the other hand, Trump could have planned for them to storm the Senate building, the citadel of the country's democracy, and disrupt the certification proceedings. Maybe they were following his instructions after all. They could have planned on kidnapping the whole Senate floor and holding everyone hostage in the building, thinking they could demand Biden not be certified. We don't know and keeping Trump as president a second term. But that's just conjecture. The real facts are coming to light as I speak. So we'll see, we'll get to the bottom of this because these guys, the FBI, the CIA, they're not playing. They're out there arresting people right now as we speak. People are going down, they're going down as we speak. But regardless of what the motives were, as a result, the Republican party has been badly, badly damaged and are now scattering all over the place, wondering how in the hell they allowed themselves to be duped by a con man. Now they have to rebuild their party and the trust of millions of Republican voters who support the Republican ticket. And one more thing, now that all these loose cannon extremist groups have been activated, how far will they stoop, still trying to save their country? When they were shouting, USA, 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 did, did they not know what country they were attacking? Did they, did they not know where they were? Why are they going in there shouting USA against USA and they're supposed to be supporting USA? That, is that supposed to be for, uh, <laughs> for, the, for the, 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 the rival group, the, the person who you're conflict? They don't even know who they're attacking. They're attacking themselves at the end of the day. And they're paying a heavy price for it. They're paying, paying a heavy price. So even after Trump comes out of the White House, will he still use these homegrown terrorists to attack the Biden administration just to try and discredit his term in office? All Trump knows how to do is get revenge from anyone and anything that doesn't agree with him. So now they want to evoke the 25th Amendment or impeach Trump. I, I think right now the 25th Amendment would take too long. So I think they're going for the impeachment. And, and I think I'm hearing by Monday they're going to deliver the impeachment process. And they said this thing can go fast. It doesn't have to take the time that it did. And they said more people are behind this impeachment than there were behind the first impeachment that they did for Donald Trump. So his social media accounts have been canceled in order to stop him from exasperating the damage. He's banned from Twitter. The Twitter in chief has been banned indefinitely from Twitter and other social media platforms because this man is clearly unstable. And his last tweet was to inform us that he will not be attending the inauguration on January 20th for the incoming President Joe Biden. What, are we gonna miss him? I, I, I mean, the resident of the United States of America, who's considered the most powerful man in the world, will be somewhere pouting in a corner 
with a McDonald's value meal during the presidential inauguration. This is a tragic moment in American history, as comical as it is. This guy, he's breaking all protocol. He's, he's just obliterating any sense of decorum. He's just, and that's why people want to hit man. Oh, he's different. He's not a politician. Well, okay, you asked for it, you got it. You didn't get a politician. Okay. Joe Biden. He may be sleepy, but he's awake. He's making sensible policies. Remember I said before in my other posts, I, I keep going back to my other posts, you guys. Remember I said in my other posts, any multi multicultural, excuse me, any multicultural or multiracial society's government should reflect its population in order to make an equal playing field. Well, Joe Biden has taken that request to task and has built the most multiracial administration in the history of America. He's got more blacks, more Spanish, more Asians, more females, and the first Native American Indian hired in that position in the American administration. And his administration is, is finished. He has completely assembled his administration even before he has gone into office. So if that's sleepy, damn, I'd like to see him when he's awake. <laughs> sleepy Joe, if, if that's sleepy, what does he do when he's awake, you guys? Because that this guy is taking care of business. Now, I got to be honest now, we saw him reading his teleprompters and he gets hicked up a couple of times like that. But you guys, we can't, we can't judge a person by that. We have to judge him by his mind and what he's thinking, his heart, his passion, and what he's doing. That's what you judge him by. It's, it's, it's not the Evelyn Wood speed reading contest. It's not a spelling bee or something. So it's about the best for the country, which invariably becomes the best for the world because America is one of the global superpowers. America does right. Other countries do right. Other countries do right. The world does right. We're all entangled in this global market economy as you see with this coronavirus attack on the world and the economies one economy goes down the other economy goes down these people are, are, are getting sick they get sick these people want a virus uh, vaccine these people want a vaccine so it, it's it's a ripple effect it's a domino ripple effect you guys so that's what we're dealing with you know so now we all have to do is just focus on dealing with this virus and how our economies are, are reacting to it like Joe Biden is coming in the same way Obama came in. He's coming into office in the middle of a hailstorm left by the previous administration. Now that he has to go in and clean it up and watch the critics come out of the woodworks, watch the haters come out and hate on Biden at every turn. But remember, they're not just hating on Biden the person. The sick old Confederate flag waving races are attacking the transformation of social, racial, and economic equality. They just don't want to see the unpolarization um, of the American global society. That's just what it is. They don't want to see the unpolarization. Un <laughs> I'm getting tongue tied again, you guys. They don't want to see the unpolarization of the American or global society. These people feel that they're entitled and they should always be in the driver's seat. That's, that's, that's what this all boils down to. That's what the Confederate flags are about. That's what these extremist groups are about. That's what attacking the Capitol Center is about, trying to stop Joe Biden and his multi multicultural coalition from moving into America. They don't want to see another black president. They don't want to see an Asian president. They don't want to see a, 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 a Latino or anybody of color. That's, that's the whole premises of this thing, you guys. This goes down to racism. That's what it is. It, there's patriotism and there's racism. You have to distinguish between the two. That's, that's what this all is boiling down to. They see the end of their Suedo oligarchy regime. That's what it is. So, my New Year's resolution is don't make any New Year's resolution at all. Just get out there, kick ass, and take numbers. 
Find your own individual greatness and fulfill your reason for being alive. Don't let anything or anyone dictate what you should be and how you should live. As long as you're true to yourself and you're doing your 100% best. Don't be afraid to fail. You see, because if you're afraid to fail at your dreams, you will fail. Because failures are a test to sharpen your skills for the success that awaits you. Hard work, sacrifice, determination, and dedication always pays off. Even if it's not paying off the way that you envision it to. But along the way, it's going to pay off in another way. Sometimes that other way is even greater than what you were anticipating. You see? So never abandon your dreams. No matter how bleak it seems. No matter how hard the trail seems at times. Einstein didn't kick off until he was after 40 something years old. Okay, took them out of a patent office and finally took him to the drawing board and started paying ten attention to his equations and stuff. So it's never too late, you guys. It's never too late, okay? So don't be afraid to fail at your dreams and always activate the God consciousness within yourself. If you have a chance, learn another language if you if you got the time. See as much of the world as possible if you have the time and resources. Eat to live instead of living to eat. If you must be in a religion, research that religion as much as you can, not only in its designated book, but also from various sources that pertain to it. Concrete imperial facts. As I say, concrete are empirical facts. There you go. And evidence do not lie. Let me repeat that again because I, I got caught on it. Concrete, empirical facts and evidence do not lie. So, the Capitol Hill insurrection was either the zenith of the Trump-led extremist rebellion or only the beginning. Time will tell, so please be diligent and aware out there, you guys. Keep your eye on the ball. I told you things are developing so rapidly now. We cannot take our eye off the ball. Either what we saw is a precursor to what's more of is going to happen. Remember the Christmas Day explosion? Look what's happened there at the Capitol Hill. Certain members of extremist group are being arrested. So what are the rest of the groups going to do? And these groups are scattered all across America. They have taken Trump off of social media, but these guys, and, and the funny thing about it is they went back and looked at some of these uh, group sites, some of these extremist group sites, and they saw these guys doing a call of arms, telling them to meet up at the Capitol on January 6th. Uh, we're going to storm the Capitol building. We're going to do this, we're going to do that, and no one took note of it. I told you, if you got the complexion for the protection, you literally get away with murder. Unfortunately, a police officer was murdered. We want to pray for all the people who lost their life. The lady who got shot in her chest. I don't care if she was a rioter or a protester. Nobody deserves to die, especially over political issues, you guys. Come on. Nobody deserves to die. So my heart goes out to all five of the people who lost their life. And to be honest, I feel sorry for the ones who are about to go to jail just for following their leader who misled them. Now look at them. They're going to... These are federal crimes, you guys. This, that, that's not child's play. Federal crimes. These guys are up for. They could have been at home uh, watching the certification for Joe Biden on television. Like they do, you know, like you do uh, sport games. You know, you sit there and you watch the game and your team is losing, but you're shouting at the screen. Maybe you throw <laughs> something at the screen. I don't know because I don't watch sports. But anyway, but they could have done that. Now these guys are facing federal crimes. The ones who they have caught and the ones who they're going after. And these guys are so arrogant and so stupid that they're filming themselves and putting it on their uh, sites and their social media networks, leading the authorities right to their doorsteps. So they're arresting them one by one by one. They're arresting everybody. So you guys, in the oncoming days and oncoming weeks and throughout this year, beside the uh, COVID-19 and vaccination issues that are going on, please be very diligent. Please be very aware of your surroundings because we don't know what these people are willing to do because they feel that 
their country has been stolen from them. Your country is stolen from you, but you've got a man coming into office saying that he's going to be your president and he's going to try to get you health care, that he's going to try to get equality for you, and you're saying that your country has been stolen from you? You guys, wake up and smell the kitchen because the coffee has burnt a long time ago. It's just Donald J's Trump ego that got squashed. And he's led you guys to follow him. Republicans, wake up. Wake up. Realize what's really going on. It's just Donald J. Trump. That's all it is. A guy who hates to lose by any means, by hook or crook. That guy hates losing, and he's a big loser. Now, all the things that he's done before, I just told you, I'm not a Republican basher. I'm not a Trump basher. I'm not here to bash anybody. I, I, I'm here for uh, to uphold the truth, okay? Throughout his career, whatever he has done, whatever has failed, whatever mishap he, he has done, then he lucked up and got into the highest office seat of the country. He became the president of the United States of America. His arrogance, his solipsism, his capricious behavior, his erratic behavior, just totally destroyed it for him on a global scale and tarnished the American image of the leader of the free world the most powerful man in the world. I thought Superman was the most powerful man in the world. Or was it Hulk or was it Thor? The most powerful Avenger, whatever the case. But the point is, they say the President of the United States, I guess because he has his fingers on certain buttons or whatever. So they say that's why he's the most powerful man in the world. Because I'm sure the most powerful man in the world doesn't hog down McDonald's. <laughs> so anyway, you guys, let me stop with this. Um, even though we feel it's a new year, I'll go with that until you guys, until your conscious level gets to another elevation. Let's call it the New Year's for now. So happy 2021, because we believe that's what year it is also. So uh, I'd like to wish you all the best throughout this coming fiscal year. I wish you guys the best of health. <sighs> Once again, with a heavy heart. I have to say uh, my condolences to Fan Kionis, who lost her brother Adolfo Kionis. You guys know him better as Shabadu. He passed away around December 30th, just before the New Year's. That's one of my dance brothers. He was a member of the Lockers. He starred in the Electric Boogaloo Breaking movies. The guy was a choreographer on tour with Madonna, David Bowie, uh, Lionel Richie, uh, Shaka Khan, uh, I mean, he, he did loads of things, you guys, you know, so we have to say a prayer for our dear brother, Shabadu. He'll be dearly missed. And uh, uh, just at the very end of last year, that's our third iconic brother I lost last year. First, Don Campbell, the inventor of locking, the creator of locking in the lockers, which Shabadu became a member. Then my dance brother, Tyrone Proctor, who's the one who got me on the Soul Train and then Shabadu at the very end of the year. So we lost three iconic dance brothers from Soul Train to Lockers to Tyrone, the, the whack doctor, whack dancing. The, those, those are two dances that are just living on in, in, in eternity, locking and whacking. Of course, body popping too, but locking and whacking. Those are, those are two staple dances that are just going on forever and ever, you guys. And we lost Tyrone Proctor. Don Campbell and Shabadu. So my heart goes out to Fawn, his sister. She came out with him from Chicago to Los Angeles to, to be on Soul Train, and they came out there and they, they made their mark. Fawn to his sister Fawn. I want to give my condolences to the rest of the lockers, to all of Shabadu's fans and all of the electric uh, Boogaloo Break and Dance movie fans, to uh, Michael Chambers' Boogaloo Shrimp. I want to give my condolences to him. He worked together with Shabadu in the movie. And so... Uh, well, wow. with a heavy heart, you guys, and anyone who's lost people due to COVID-19 or any other illnesses, I have people very, very close to me. I have family members right now who have COVID-19, but they seem to be doing fine. So you guys, let's pray for everybody. Let's keep continue to pray for everybody. We're going to get through this, you guys. Okay. So as I always say, spread the love, make love great again. 
because if we make love great again, we will all be great. Now that we've gotten rid of the make America great again mantra, let's bring in the make love great again mantra. I already got the theme song. Check it out on YouTube. Make love great again because we will all be great. That's, that's the answer. That's the antidote, you guys. We had to give that to these extremist groups and, and play it over for them. We lock, lock them in a... Uh, Strap them to a chair and pry their eyes open and make them hear the song continuously. Make love great again. Make love great again. And maybe it will like desensitize all that hate and racism and anger and rage in them and convert it into something more productive, okay? Anyway, you guys, take care. I love you. I love you from my heart. From Abuja, Nigeria. This is Jeffrey Daniel again. Until next time, make the best of this year, you guys. Make the best of it. Thank you. Bye-bye.